are. Tell me everything. There's nothing left. <laughs> I've, told, I've said everything for the last two years. It's still not finished. It's not finished? When is it going to be finished? Well, it comes out in July, so probably the end of June. <laughs> probably like a day before the premiere. In today's video, we are continuing our coverage on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4, predominantly talking about Thor 4, aka Thor, Love and Thunder, and also talking about some major leaks to do with that, and also some major leaks to do with Black Panther 2, aka Wakanda Forever. But first, if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC pop culture based videos we do on this channel. If you could subscribe, that would really show your appreciation for me. And also, if you could comment down below, like the video share it for the algorithm it really does help comments and sharing this video out really does help and if you want to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice just check us out on instagram at wash if you could give us a follow over there try to build a community and also if you could check us out on twitter sphere wash g over there that'd be much appreciated i have like 40 followers over there so let's get into the black panther 2 news as we know it's looking really likely that shiri aka black panther's sister will temporarily become the next Black Panther. But what's interesting in this scenario is from information going around the Twitter sphere and the scooper sphere, it looks like a lot of people were filmed in the Black Panther suit to try and mislead people into thinking who could be the next Black Panther. Now it's looking like Umbaku will be the next Black Panther because his role in Wakanda Forever was heavily increased and also his pay was heavily increased. And that pretty much confirms that he will be the next Black Panther. So maybe Major Tease confirms a major conflict in this movie. As we know, Ironheart's role in Wakanda Forever has looked to be inspired by her relationship with Leticia Wright, aka Shiri. Ironheart, Namor, centric role in Black Panther 2, according to her by Murphy's Multiverse, which is a very respectable website. Dominic Thorne. Riri Williams is rumored to be the spark that lights Black Panther's Wakanda forever fire. The future Ironheart is said to be responsible for the intervention that leads Wakanda into a huge conflict with a hidden civilization led by Namor. Wakanda pursues Atlantis. Whilst Ironheart's placement in Wakanda forever seems solely for the purpose of introducing the young hero, the rumor indicates she's critical to the sequel's narrative. In the comics, Namor is often portrayed as an antagonistic some of the iterations of the Submariner operate as a fully-fledged villain with the anti-hero vibe already established on the page. It seems natural for Namor's MCU introduction to be as a villain. The said rumor indicates Wakanda is pursuing conflict with a hidden civilization. No other way around it with the home country of T'Challa largely being a neutral force within the MCU. What possible intervention could provoke this? What is Ironheart's intervention? We don't don't know we really don't know but obviously as we know iron heart essentially links to iron man the female iron man essentially in a roundabout way it's going to be interesting to see if the iron heart suit actually does have any ai so also there's some other news black panther 2 leak reveals sequels main a villain allegedly the underwater city is rumored to play a key part in the sequel but it's something that still hasn't been confirmed marvel doesn't confirm anything this hasn't kept outlets from reporting it however including news about a casting. Essentially, the person will be playing Namor, but just how big role will he play? Well, according to industry insiders, audiences expect the anti-hero to have plenty of screen time, indicating the villain is none other than Namor. Industry insider Charles Murphy from Murphy's Multiverse has revealed Namor, the leader of the underwater nation of Atlantis, will indeed be the primary antagonistic for Black Panther, Wanda forever. And I believe he, he's a really good source. To be honest, he's pretty much one of the best sources there are so i do believe that and as we said in the pre-report before this the cause of the conflict is rumored to riri williams an intervention of hers is set to spark something crazy maybe it's her new suit that is set to debut in this project though it's hard to see why that would catch namor's attention so that is freaking fantastic so not only have we revealed that the next black panther is going to be in waku we've also revealed that atlantis is going to be heavily involved this is also set up in endgame where right at the end of the movie 
movie, when the hologram forms, there was a disturbance under the water and none other than Atlantis, and that's where Namor was set up. So this has been set up for such a long time. So also in the news, we've got some new first looks of Thor, Love and Thunder, Christian Bale's best look yet, although it's not really his best look. I put a tweet out about a week ago. We've literally had images of Christian Bale as Gore, the God Butcher, the freaking savage that's going to kill all the gods on the internet for months and months. But for some reason, the internet seems to explode because of some Marvel Legend toy sets that have come out of none other than Mighty Thor, Groot, Gore, King Valkyrie, Star-Lord, Revenger Thor, and Thor, although he looks more like King Thor. So what is fascinating here is a lot of people are angry because you've got such a high caliber actor, such as Christian Bale, basically being put in mild prosthetics and then has some kind of garment around him. And the internet seems to think that Gore the God Butcher looks freaking pathetic. But realistically, if you look at Gore in the comics, he's literally just got a cloak gown around him and looks like he's got prosthetics over his head. Now, if you haven't learned anything about Marvel or DC, you realistically can't judge the final product until you actually see what it's looking like because judging our complete look from the image that we posted on the internet and also from the image that's going around Marvel Legends, the internet isn't really happy with this look, but I don't understand why because it's a Marvel Legends toy set. It doesn't really reveal anything to anyone because we already had the real image that's been going around the internet for literal months. Of course, he wasn't going to look crazy. Of course, his face was going to be in makeup and prosthetics. Gore, the God Butcher, is a freaking savage. Now, as of time recording this video, there is supposed to be a trailer, maybe coming out Monday. I don't know if to believe it. Why? Because I've not heard that information from anyone credible at all. So the trailer could come out Monday. It might not. Now, yes, Thor... Tessa Thompson. Yeah, they are officially promoting the movie, but that does not mean a trailer needs to come out. We have had official images of Thor himself and of Jane Foster, a banner which is in HD. I mean, the only real reason why people believe a trailer will come out on Monday is because of some hand signs they're all making. I mean, I really hope the trailer does come out this coming Monday, but that doesn't really mean it will. So, there has been some internal test screening with Disney employees or people affiliated with Disney for Thor Love and Thunder. Now, I heard this information a few weeks ago, but Big Screen Leaks recently confirmed what I already heard, saying that people freaking loved it. But let's be honest, guys, people always love it from the test screener. The test, that's why I don't really think test screening really holds any precedence anymore because the reaction's always, yeah, it was freaking cool. Have you ever realized there's never any negative feedback from test screenings that you actually hear? I've never heard any negative feedback from test screening. It's like the Batman standing ovation. I mean, even the test screen information for Morbius was positive. And then you watch the movie and um, I'm not going to like discredit you or stop you from watching Morbius. But if you've watched Morbius, you, you kind of know how that movie went. So we have a plot leak that no one is talking about to do with Thor, Love and Thunder. So I thought I'd go over it. Now I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Be careful for spoilers. It might ruin your life, but this whole video is pretty much spoilery. Now this isn't coming from the test screen and it is worth saying that. Right, let's break it down. So, Gore the God Butcher is raiding pantheons. Now the Greek gods are asking for help. Thor is the strongest warrior and wants him drafted in, reluctantly, but he eventually agrees. The reply is interesting, as he is a warrior leader, but he declines. Dumb jokes about worm bloods being squashed throughout the first half. Olympians meet with Thor at New Asgard, offering the Asgardian a refugee if they help defeat Gore. Zeus has an interest in Valkyrie, and this becomes the main plot point as she and Thor know a horrible secret only the secret fathers what led gods are called for known now I mean that's I've got a few of them that's one of them which I don't know I mean as I said there's no official real images out there that we haven't already spoken about there isn't much images out to do with like Zeus and Russell Crowe and that stuff so you've kind of got to believe it or not believe it Thor Love and Thunder takes place two years after Endgame first five minutes of the movie deals with Thor and Peter Quill not getting on along. He finally gets kicked off the ship and left on aquatic planet. First sight ensues with Thor fighting against Slamamanda people as the opener credits roll, the biggest of which may or may not resemble Goliath from Journey into the Mystery issue 63. Cheesy moment where the camera stops for 10 seconds to show off the title card. Interesting. After Goliath goes down, the leader, later revealed to be Captain Reptile, offers a truce. Dumb? 
exposition about how Thor butchered the thing for the Guardians of the Galaxy and how bad he was at outer space costumes. One flashback has him in a brawl with Howard the freaking duck. Very interesting. Now that's all the additional information I have to do with a new plot leak to do with Thor Love and Thunder, which sounds like a freaking porno. Yes, I get it. It does sound like a freaking porno. Yeah, I get it. We have been over a lot of other plot leaks to do with Gore's motivation. His overall motivation seems to be for this entire movie that Gore's whole family was slaughtered. He blames the gods and he wants to take over and kill all the freaking gods, including all the different variations of Thor throughout time and history. And that is why the rumor is we're going to see Thor from lots of different times throughout history. And there seems to be some multiversal plot. That is why I frequently keep getting told the trailer will not come out till after Doctor Strange 2. But if it does, it doesn't particularly matter because they can show parts of a trailer and it's only going to be a teaser trailer. It won't be a full-fledged trailer, although teaser trailers tend to be two minutes long. So Gore is going to slaughter everyone pretty much. Then a vision of his former wife that was slaughtered essentially will come and tell Gore this is not the way and then by the time it's too late he's gonna realize what he's done and then essentially he's got a sword the necro sword okay we don't know if it actually is the necro sword we believe it is the necro sword and if it is the necro sword that links everything to you guessed it you guessed it the god of the symbiotes no who is a freaking beast i really hope the necro sword is in play and there is a cheeky wink to no the god of the symbiotes now no technically will be owned by Marvel, not Sony, because Null is kind of new and it wasn't part of the arrangement because he already had it. So I'm just waiting to see if it is actually the Necrosword that Gore the God Butcher has, because if it is, then we should get some kind of origin story of the God of the Symbiotes, because it's got to explain where the sword came from if it is a Necrosword. It's not random, you're just going to appear that the Necrosword is there, although it pretty much is unofficially confirmed to be the Necrosword, and the toy leaks with the Lego, etc., pretty much confirms it is Necrosword, which confirms Null has to kind of show up in a roundabout way. Now, the toy set that came out with Marvel Legends for Gore, it does appear to be the Necrosword, but I don't know if they're going to call it Necrosword, but if it is the Necrosword, then it's all got to tie to the god of the symbiotes, Null himself. I just don't know if they're actually going to call it the Necrosword because then that comes to Null and Null is so freaking omnipotent that he could take out Celestial without even trying. He could take out Thanos without even trying. He is so freaking powerful. But with the Marvel Legends toy set, there is a bit of an explainer, but it doesn't really say much. Wielding a strange and terrifying weapon, Gore will let nothing stand in his way. That does sound like the Necrosword to me, but it doesn't exactly confirm it. If you've read the comics, you know the Necrosword Necrosword is freaking evil. It harnesses darkness, the crate of the symbiotes, aka all the venoms. It's going to be freaking interesting if it is the Necrosword because they're going to have so much explaining to do, but I don't think it will be. So like always, guys, please check us out on Instagram at Wall Street. If you want to see the beautiful face behind the voice, please follow me. Getting so close to 23,000 followers on Instagram, it would be cool if we could hit it sometime this month. Check us out on Twitter, WallStuG40 follows over there. And let me know what you thought about this video to do with Wakanda Forever and Thor Love and Thunder. So like always, guys, check us out on Instagram. Instagram at WarsGu. Follow us over there if you want to see the beautiful face behind the voice. Also check us out on Twitter, WarsGuG. But more importantly, comment on the video, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. Let's get this channel growing. And if you want to become a channel member for less than 99p, there aren't really any perks. It just tells me that you appreciate me. And I will catch you in another video very soon, guys. Catch you later.